We see what a lot of upper and middle class Victorians in particular wore during the day and evening, but the question remains, what did they wear to bed? I thought, what better place to talk about Victorian nightwear than wearing my Victorian nightwear whilst in bed? I'm not a fashion historian, so this isn't going to be some wildly comprehensive review of all things Victorian sleepwear. But I sleep in a Victorian, and sometimes Georgian, nightgown. So I've thought about this question a lot and wanted to do some digging. Like with most things historical fashion, research is very limited regarding the working class. That's why I make this class distinction. Also, nightwear for a long time was seen as a luxury item and not a necessity. I'd love to truly know what the working class wore to bed, but finding that information is far from simple. This is also why I will continue pushing for working class clothing representation in my own life and style choices. My guess is that the working class likely would have worn plainer and simpler versions of middle or upper class nightgowns or simply would have slept in a shift or chemise or other related undergarment. Since most individuals owned base layer garments to wear under clothing, and these were actually seen as a necessity. So from here on out, this lack of lower class knowledge in fashion history generally is why I'm primarily speaking about middle and upper class Victorians. A couple years ago, I acquired a wonderfully unique antique garment that actually arrived with its history, which rarely tends to happen with antique clothing. It's a wedding nightgown from about 1875, and along with it came a photo of the wearer, some information about the garment, and their wedding spoons. The reason the wedding spoons are important is because this is actually this woman's wedding nightgown, as in the nightgown that she wore on the evening of her wedding. And it somehow fell into my possession. For cheap too, I think I probably paid like 20 pounds for the nightgown and the history to go along with it, so now I very much do feel like it's protector. Towards the end of this video, we will examine some features of this wedding nightgown since it's an ideal representation of middle-class Victorian sleepwear and perhaps a woman's nicest nightgown since it's for a special occasion. But first, I want to speak about some of the sleeping clothing and sleeping practices of the Victorians. Before we get into clothing, however, I'd like to set the scene a little and describe the middle-class to upper-class Victorians' bed linens. Today we can go to the store and pick from a wide array of sheets with various qualities, colors, colors, materials, and more. But in 1857, according at least to The Practical Housekeeper, a book written that year, for sheets, linen and cotton, and Swiss twilled calico are used. The pillowcases must be of the same material as the sheets. White and cream were also popular colors for Victorian linens, as my guess is they helped to create a light and airy feeling in the room. Perhaps as well, then dyes would not have had to be utilized at a time when dyeing was a major extra step in the process and may have potentially cost more too. Plus dyes had a tendency to run, so white or cream would have made it easier for cleaning or boiling bedding. The typical Victorian sheets weren't so different than these here that I'm surrounded by today on my own bed actually. These are made from 100% linen and made from European flax and some of the finest, softest quality linen ever, I must say. And they're only going to get soft Softer with every wash. They're kindly provided by the sponsor of today's video, Brooklinen. I realized a long time ago that much like the fabric you choose for your clothing, the material you choose for your sheets matters too. Sleep hygiene is very important and the quality of bedding makes a big difference. Turns out investing in sheets that are long lasting and comfortable is just part of adulting 101. <laughs> I love Brooklyn because they create high quality home goods to elevate your home that are going to last you a long time and are actually worth the investment. I chose Brooklinen's linen hardcore sheet bundle and the color cream because I wanted to select something that would be as close to what linens may have been like in the 1800s as possible. And these sheets don't just feel great, but they look great too. The linen hardcore bundle includes one flat sheet, one fitted sheet, one duvet cover, and four pillowcases. You automatically save 25 5% when you buy a bundle versus buying individual items as you need them. Cream isn't the only color they offer. You can mix and match from several color and pattern options to fit your own unique aesthetic. Light yet cozy, the Linen Hardcore Sheet Bundle is perfect for warm days or cool nights, as linen is an incredibly versatile material and one of my personal favorites. This bundle is OECOTEX certified, meaning it is tested for harmful substances and certified to meet the strict global safety criteria of the Standard 100 by OECOTEX. 
ensuring safety for you and your family. And each piece is washed and dyed in small batches, giving this collection a playfully unique and individual character. I slept on these linen sheets last night and it was honestly an amazing experience, specifically for temperature control. It also made me feel like a true Victorian. Brooklinen is having one of their largest sales of the year right now to celebrate their birthday through May 8th. If you want to stock up on bedding, to bath essentials for 2023, Now's the time to take advantage of their sale where Brooklinen products are 25% off using my link below. Thank you so much to Brooklinen for sponsoring this video. Now back to learning about what Victorians wore to bed. The scene has been set a little with regards to what one may have found on a Victorian bed in regards to the type of linens. So now I'm going to shift the focus to actual clothing. In this case, what Victorian women wore. As I mentioned earlier, nightwear for a long time was seen as a luxury item because realistically, you can wear whatever you want in bed. In particular, if you own a bunch of chemises or shifts. Sometimes when I forget to do my laundry and have run out of nightgowns, I'll just wear a clean Victorian chemise to bed as well. But for women who could afford it, Victorian nightgowns tended to be very high-necked with long or capped sleeves. Modesty was, of course, a big element of Victorian women's wear, and the same can be reflected in the nightgowns. These nightgowns also tended to be quite long and made from white, or in some instances, slightly off-white linen or cotton fabric. They also could really vary in extravagance, yet the white color and simpler cut gave them an air of simplicity. It might seem counterintuitive to add ruffles and embroidery and lace to nightwear, but like many things Victorian, even that which would go unseen by the public's eye was often made with fine details, if obviously it could be afforded. And the way I interpret this is because the Victorian era was heavily about appearances. That means wealthier individuals wanted the finest of everything, even if it was bed clothing, and those who potentially weren't as wealthy may have wanted to come across wealthier than they actually were. These nightgowns were what Victorian women wore actually in bed sleeping. They could also be accompanied by nightcaps. These could be used for warmth, to protect the hair, and also potentially for modesty reasons. They aren't all that different than some of the cotton or linen bonnets or sun caps at the time. Victorians who could afford it had this tendency to wear different garments throughout the day for different occasions. So from a nightgown, it would seem sensible that a Victorian woman would then change into daywear, but what also exists at this time were wrappers, tea gowns, and dressing gowns, which were kind of similar things, just sometimes cut a little different and embellished differently differently, but we can more or less use these terms interchangeably. They would have been worn by upper and middle class primarily as casual wear, so before bed, upon waking, and perhaps to breakfast, at which point then a change would be made into a day gown. They were considered to be very informal, and you would really only want some people seeing you in them if you were middle or upper class. If you've watched my channel for a while, you know that I love wrappers, and I've made a bunch of them, and they are basically what I wear nowadays most of the time. And that's because wrappers were also worn by the working class for far more occasions than just in private at home. They are brilliant garments for work wear, maternity wear, and more. And the upper classes just generally had much stricter rules and etiquette when it came to these things, which is why it was kept for private. But the reality is the working class would have had fewer garments and just out of logic would have preferred more versatile garments. The wrapper is very versatile and is loose fit or belted, so it changes with inevitable body changes that we all go through. I'd imagine a well-made wrapper could could last a person many decades when cared for and mended. And I certainly hope that my own wrappers last just as long. For Victorian men, it was a bit simpler. They generally wore night shirts, which could be quite long, but later by the 1890s, you get the classic pajamas, which is more of what we see today, which generally included a pair of pants. There's a good chance too that many Victorian men just wore their normal shirts to bed. I'm not, however, very knowledgeable about Victorian menswear, so maybe some others might be able to share in the comments deeper insights into Victorian men's sleepwear. Now that you might have a deeper understanding of what Victorians actually wore to bed, let's have a look at this gorgeous antique wedding nightgown from 1875. So this here is my beautiful antique nightgown from 1875 approximately. And there is a lot of things that are very special about this nightgown, I would say. Firstly, the fact that it came with the history, which included photos of the wearer, and also information about them, as well as their wedding spoons. And of course, the nightgown is very wrinkly because there is no way I'm ironing a 150-year-old garment. <laughs> When it comes to actual cut and construction, I suspect that this is likely a middle-class nightgown. And this would have been for a very special occasion because of course it was a wedding nightgown. So it would have been worn on the night 
of the wedding. Regarding the construction, it's actually very straightforward. There's basically a giant rectangular piece with a slit cut here, and then that's embellished. And that is gathered down into two yokes here. So it's really nothing complicated. And the same goes for the back, of course, though, minus the slit at the front. Also, some of the pieces of the rectangle are actually pieced, which again tells me that it's likely a middle-class nightgown. Though in upper-class clothing, you do get piecing as well. I think it was just very common sense because you didn't want to waste the fabric because it was so expensive. One of the more intricate aspects of this nightgown is the feather stitch embroidery, which is done all over in in white work. And you see this a lot actually in Victorian undergarments as well as in nightgowns. It's a very common decorative element. And furthermore, you get this sort of broderie anglaise trim that's going on here and at the front as well. One thing that I absolutely adore about antique undergarments is the use of linen covered buttons. The antique ones are sometimes for sale online just as cards with the buttons on them. I've gotten some of them before actually. They're really fun to add onto your own undergarments if you're making replicas. You can see some of these decorative elements continuing on with the cuff and just in the traditional Victorian nightgown fashion you get the very high neckline very long with long sleeves so this is a very traditional cut for what you'll see in Victorian nightwear I actually took a pattern off of this nightgown a while back and so I have been working to sort of reconstruct a version of it but it's just one of those projects that I have on the side that I'm not really putting a lot of energy into it's more like a grab-and-go type project if I feel like inspiration suddenly strikes once again, thank you to Brooklyn for sponsoring this video. My Brooklyn and sheets are so incredibly comfortable and I absolutely love the linen. They're super high quality and I couldn't recommend them more. Remember that Brooklinen is having their birthday sale right now through May 8th. If you want to stock up on bedding to bath essentials for 2023, now's the time to take advantage of their sale where Brooklinen products are 25% off using my link below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in two weeks for another video.